Yeah. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Voodoo Garden. My name is Ray. I will be your host today. I have a little snack here. I, want, I was going to eat this while I was setting up the Voodoo Garden, but then I thought, no, 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 I want to show you what this is because it's really an oddball looking, you know what, I'll just throw the seed in here and see what comes of it. Uh, I have a little oddball thing that I received as a gift from a viewer, a friend, and uh, it's called a uh, Hidden Rose Apple. I think that's what it's called. I, I got a box in the mail, and uh, I get that quite often, boxes or envelopes. And uh, in this box, there was some maple syrup, which I really do appreciate. It was delicious. Uh, I got some little bottles of maple syrup, but I also got these apples. And uh, I didn't think anything of them. I thought, oh, apples. I have a whole apple tree and somebody sent me apples. But the weird thing is, I know you slice them open and take a look at this. Okay, that is weird. I've never seen anything quite like it. What I thought was really strange is that there was no note in the box. So I saw these apples and I thought, eh, what the heck? So I took an apple and took a bite out of it and it was all pink on the inside of it. That's odd. I've never heard of anything like that. And uh, since there was no note, I, it was left up to me to research this. And so I was asking my friends on Facebook and I got some ideas and that led me to Google, which led me to everything else and a few cute puppy videos. But in the end, I think I found out what these are and they're called uh, Hidden Rose Apples. At least that's what I think. So uh, these were sent by Ray. Thanks, Ray. Uh, Ray Alameda. That's the one that sent me the tomato plants and the pepper plants and just about everything else I grew in my garden this year. <laughs> He's been sending me all kinds of strange stuff and usually he doesn't even tell me they're coming. So I get these surprise boxes in the mail and I never really know what to expect. But um, today's episode, I wanted to show you strange things because, you know, this is the voodoo garden, but also a little bit of common sense to make your strangeness make a little bit of sense. Um, I have two plants here today. This one, pardon me, I got apples stuck in between my teeth, but uh, I have the purple passion plant here. And remember, uh, I think it was like a couple months ago, I had uh, indoor houseplants. I wanted to show you how to grow indoor houseplants. Well, I didn't do an update on them because I really weren't doing anything. And remember, I told you that it takes a while for them to take root and to get ready. And then once they get ready, then they start going. Well, this is what happens when your plants finally take root. Take a look at this. This started out as quite a small plant and uh, I wanted to buy a small plant because I didn't want to get a large one and then show you how it grows because that's kind of ridiculous if it starts out large. Where's the fun in actually growing it? So I got a very small plant for just a couple dollars and I transplanted it into a larger pot and it took forever. It just sat there and sat there and looked purple and didn't do anything. But recently, and this is the habit of these plants, it takes a while and then once their roots get settled and they start going down, that's when you know that the plant is solid and the way that it shows it is this. All of a sudden out of nowhere you get this growth spurt and uh, purple passion plants or gynura as they're called in Latin, they will show it off in an amazing way. They grow so fast and so furious that you really can't keep up with them. This stem is going to get crazy long and they can get, I think, in, uh, I say in captivity, but indoors. I've had these get about maybe 10 feet long at the most. Yeah, they get really, really long, but they're going to get a little bit gangly. So I'm going to have to keep these pruned back every now and then. If you are growing these, don't let them flower. Ugh. Once they start flowering, it's an ugly mess. You get these creepy looking anemic yellow flowers and they're really ugly and it slows the plant down. If you see flowers, prune it back to keep it going because the beauty in this plant isn't the flowers, it's the foliage. And you can see, the foliage and the stems. If you don't grow them too fast in really bright light, they will get more fuzz on their leaves. So keep them under bright, diffused light, medium house light, and you're gonna get the best color, the best bang for your buck with these things. Yeah, that one is a beauty. This one is a little bit strange. I gotta admit, this one had me puzzled for the longest time, and it continues to have me puzzled, which means I'm really getting my money's worth out of this. But what I've been doing is trimming off these ugly leaves. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but I had a white fly problem in here. I had a white fly problem last year in my old home in uh, Br uh, Wyndham, Minnesota. But when I moved here, I got rid of most of them because, you know, when you take the plants outside, the white flies fly off. Well, I had a couple here and there. And I tried spraying them, and that slows them down, but it really doesn't stop them. And so I finally went old school. Yep, I played the old ogre, and I took my finger and my thumb. <laughs> This is how I get rid of white flies. I know. I'm the I'm the plant genius. Yes, what I do 
is I turn the leaves upside down because that's where the white flies hide. If you have white flies, you generally never see them unless you flip the leaves upside down. Then you'll see these little white insects on the leaves of your plants. And you gotta be careful because they'll take off really quick. And what I did was every single morning when I'd come in here, and I, I make a routine. Every single morning I'd come in, check the plants, turn on the lights, make sure everything's okay, water them, enjoy myself, and Rascal sniffs around and, and um, looks for mice. But what I do is I turn all the leaves of all the plants upside down and I look for white flies. And uh, the second I see them, I touch them with my finger because they are so delicate that they die just by touching them. And that's how I killed every single white fly in here. And for the last week, there hasn't been a single white fly. I know it sounds really ridiculous and low tech. You're staring at me. Come here. <laughs> Somebody mentioned that one time. They said, you know, your dog stares at you like he wonders what the heck you're talking about. And he does. He'll sit there and he'll stare at me like, what? Because he wants to go out and do something and he doesn't want to be in the voodoo garden unless there's a mouse running around or crickets or anything like that. Hey, look, a bucket full of leaves. Yeah. But um, what was I talking about? Oh, this, um, killing the white flies. That's how I killed every white fly in my, in my uh, voodoo garden. And uh, I'd love to give you guys some perfect advice to keep your plants happy and healthy. But you know what? Sometimes we just have to get out there and do the work. You can't just have perfect plants and not have to work at it. With me, uh, a lot of these plants, I have to work really hard to keep them healthy. And that's just the nature of the game. Sometimes you have to work. Sometimes you're blessed and your plants, like this vanilla orchid, they grow in spite of what you do. I don't know what the heck I'm doing right on this plant. I have no idea. I'm growing it in the totally wrong soil, probably the totally wrong light. I have no idea what I'm doing, but this plant won't seem to go. And then some plants, like the uh, citrus tree over there, I did everything I could possibly do, and the darn thing just dropped dead. So I have no idea. You, you can't explain plants. The best you can do is hop on and enjoy the ride. The weird thing about this plant, and the reason that I wanted to feature it in this episode is, it's bearing fruit. Don't know why. <laughs> One minute the thing is is uh, sick with white flies and it's got these weird dots on the leaves and stuff. And I'm like, wow, what's going on? I wish I could figure this out. And the next second it puts out a little flower and I thought, oh, well, that's kind of odd. And then the next day the flower drops off, which I thought, okay, that's more normal. Then the next day I notice that there's this little stick coming out of it and the stick gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And it turns out it's a bean. Yeah, I got this thing to, it's a bean plant. I had no idea what it is and I asked you guys and you were giving me all kinds of strange answers and somebody said bean and whoever said bean, you're right. Here's what I'm talking about by the old damaged stuff from the white flies. Yeah, they're not really game enders but they really do make your plants look awful. It almost looks like a fungus attack, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks very similar but what they do, these little buggers, They'll go underneath the leaf and they start sucking out the juices and that robs it of the chlorophyll. That's why they have the little dots. Each one of those dots is an attack by a white fly. Yep, it's not pretty. But look, I gotta show you this. Look at that. It's a bean. <laughs> yes, I got a bean. Oh, that's the strangest thing. Don't know what kind of bean this is. All I know is it seems to be doing good. Strange little plant it is. And it's getting healthier and healthier. I, I chopped it off because it was getting tall and lanky and now it's got all kinds of new growth coming out all over the place. Who knew you could do this with a bean? This is a strange looking bean. You gonna wake up or are you gonna just lay there? He's gonna just lay here. Sometimes, you know, he doesn't wanna play. He doesn't want anything except to just lay in my arms and just relax. And uh, I carry him around like a loaf of bread. But uh, one last thing on this plant, as the leaves die and as the leaves die on all of my plants, I keep a bucket here and I throw all the leaves in here, whether they're green, brown, or whatever, and I just leave them in there. I don't add soil, I don't add any kind of anything to it, no water, I just leave them in the bucket and they eventually dry out to a crisp. And then, oops, sorry, well, go play, go spread joy. And then, every now and then I'll take a leaf and I crush it up, just like a cracker, and I spread the powder on top of my plants. And this feeds the plants. Yes, I do use organic fertilizers in here and that feeds the plants. But in addition to fertilizing my plants, I like to also feed the soil organic matter. And that's one thing that organic fertilizers just will not do. They will not put organic matter into your plants. So if you have a plant and you're feeding it, yeah, that's fine. It's gonna feed the soil, it's gonna feed the plant. But 
as time goes on, you'll notice that your soil gets smaller and smaller and smaller. The organic matter is slowly decomposing into nothing. So what we need to do is we need to add more organic matter into it. You can add more potting soil or what I do is I take the waste products and that's all this is, is dead stuff in a bucket and I put them in a bucket because otherwise they'll be all over the floor. And then as they dry, I just crumble them into small pieces onto the soil. What happens when you do that is as you water the plant, it keeps the, the dry stuff moist and there are microbes in the soil that you don't even know exist. There are fungi, there are microbes, there are all kinds of living things in your living soil and they will come right up through the most moist soil and they will eat the stuff. I know it's really kind of creepy if you think about it, migrating uh, stuff in your soil coming up to eat stuff and that's what it does. It decomposes that, takes it back into the soil and feeds your soil and keeps it nice and light and beautiful. And I've been doing this for years and I've been using the same soil for years. I don't change my soil. I just keep recycling it, recycling it and it works for me. And I want to show you something. I want to show you this in action too. I didn't want to just tell you about this and you're like, eh, well, maybe he's right, maybe he's wrong. I want to show you a demonstration of exactly what's going on in the soil so that you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Take a look at this and you're going to be a little bit amazed. On the top of this pot, you can see that there's a seed. This is not a live seed. It's never going to germinate. It just died. It was a bad seed and it didn't work out. But I'm going to zoom in as close as this camera can get and I want to show you what's going on. I just threw it into this pot because it was in the way and I set it off to the side. But something happened that I didn't really expect and I want to show you what's still going on with this seed. Let me get as close as I can with this. I just tossed this in here but uh, if you look really close, hopefully this picks it up. Let me use both hands to turn this so it's not quite so jerky. When I lift this up, you notice how it lifts up soil with it? It's not because the soil is stuck to it. It's because right here where the seed joins the soil, you might be able to see this. See that light colored stuff right at the tip of my thumb? That is a fungus. Yep, that is soil fungus that is growing out of the soil and into the seed. Now let me wipe all this off so that you can see what the effects are on the seed. Now see how the seed is rounded at the top? This entire seed was round, but the part that touched the soil is gone. It's flat at the bottom. Is that amazing or what? Yep, this is the soil in action. The soil is actually sending up fungus, and I think it's called mycelium or something weird like that. It sends it up and into the seed and digests the seed. It's turning into this powder. That is amazing. The soil is actually digesting, I'm gonna put this back in here, but the soil is actually digesting a seed and taking it back into the soil. You don't think of soil as a living, breathing thing. And this I wanted to show you because this demonstrates how the soil is actually alive. There are things in here that are doing stuff that we don't even imagine. They're coming up, they're feeding themselves, they're taking care of the garbage that we toss on top that we just consider waste. It is food for the soil. This is remarkable. I love this. And I know I come across as like a broken record and maybe some kind of a weird hippie soil junkie kind of guy, but I, I like to express this because if you can actually stop and focus on what is going on in an area that we don't even notice. I mean, it looks like something that's inert. Soil. Even though it's indoors, it's still soil. It's still the earth. And the earth is, is an amazing, dynamic, moving, growing, breathing, living thing. And it takes us, you know, when we die, it takes plants. When they die, it takes everything. Even rocks die. The rocks will break down into powder and be taken up as minerals back into the soil. The earth is the engine that fuels everything. And I think the thing about the voodoo garden that uh, really gets me is that it's a living, breathing thing. And no matter what I have here, no matter if it's a success or a failure, it goes into the cycle to feed the next generation of whatever I try in the voodoo garden. So when I say I don't ever uh, throw away soil, I never throw away anything around here because I know that if I'm throwing away the soil that's in here, I'm throwing away a lot of work, I'm throwing away something that's living and breathing, and it's something that I can use in here. I recycle it, I take everything that dies in here and I reuse it, and uh, it keeps the garden growing. So there are, no, there are no failures in here. Any failure that I have, any plant that dies, it turns into this, 
and it goes into feeding the next generation of successors that we have here in the Voodoo Garden. And this thing is just the strangest looking apple. Yeah, he doesn't like apples. But I do. I know you wish you would. Now, every time he sees me eating an apple, he's like, gosh, I wish I wanted that, but I don't. Don't lick it. Once you lick it, I'm not eating this thing. But thank you, everybody, for joining me for this little strange, preachy type of guru, weird soil rant thing that I have going on. I was just watering the plants this morning, and it hit me, and I thought, you know what? I need to talk about this. So I grabbed you and dragged you in here kicking and screaming and grabbed an apple because I wanted to talk about this. It's something that I think is important. It's important to me. It's important to my garden. And I hope you enjoyed today's episode. A little bit of updates, the strange little things going on with my plants. And next week, next week, I will start opening up mail. I've been collecting mail. <laughs> I've been collecting mail. All kinds of strange stuff comes into the mail. And I've been collecting it. I'm going to start reading that and starting the weekend edition. But for right now, He's looking a little bit bored. Little Crackhead wants to go out and play, even though it's 20 degrees outside. He doesn't care. He knows that whenever it gets too cold, I pick him up and carry him around. Lazy butthead. Okay, thank you everybody for joining us in the Voodoo Garden. We really do appreciate it. Hey, you want to say it? No? I'll say it. We're out of here. Have a great day, everybody. Let's go, baby dog. Bye-bye.